after working so hard in that fallen land, given all my energy, given all my time, having stayed away from my children, but I lost everything. I did. Life is unpredictable, they said. We all love hearing stories about people who began with a very little and cleaned up to be really rich. But how often do we think about the opposite? This woman was a marionette, but today she's a very poor woman. She was living in the United States with a tons of money, living a happy and luxurious life, and had a loads of vehicles that made her life super easy. I had my own apartment with all the everything, uh, everything yeah. need. Then uh, I had two cars. Life was great, but then her life turned completely upside down and she lost everything. Yeah, and uh, I used to have a lot of stuff. Okay. I used to be a millionaire, somebody who had a lot of stuff. Yeah. Because when I was in America, I worked pretty hard. Yeah. Very, very hard. Mm. And I managed to acquire a lot of stuff. Mm. Unfortunately, I've lost most of this, most of all these things. Yeah, I know. So I'm just living a very simple life. Hmm. What really brought her from this to this? I have visited Kenya multiple times and have crossed a variety of stories. Usually, it's a place filled with fascinating tales, often centered around entertainment. However, it was a whole new experience because this story touched my heart deeply. We went on a long journey back to Kenya, but this time we met this very sad, beautiful mother and she's ready to share her story with us. My name is Beatrice Joki Mangure. I was born in a place called Embu in, in Kenya, and I got educated there. After my education, I moved to Nairobi City, where I went to college and I started working in Nairobi. I worked in Nairobi for quite uh, a long time because I worked uh, in an NGO that was called Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind. But in the process of working, I happened to meet a man who, and I met him in church because since I was young, I was a church girl. This time, it was indeed the right moment to get married and start a family. They got married and lived together happily. Later, they got two children, a son and a daughter. Because now we had a family, we decided, as I was still working at this NGO, to start a business, which he was to run the business. And that's what we did. I went to, the, uh, to my place of work, took some loans, and I brought the money to him so that he can start a family business. However, Things don't always turn out the way we hoped after choosing someone to spend our lives with. Six years in our marriage, the man decided to leave the marriage. And he said he wanted an, an uneducated woman. So he left me and uh, he went for my house girl who he married. This was the beginning of a hard life and the path that led her to the life she lives today. And due to the depression of uh, my marriage breaking, in, breaking up, I wanted to move out of the community. So I decided to start making plans to fly out of the country. And then uh, it's when I decided to go to the United States so that I can start, uh, start life all over, where at least, uh, I mean, my heart will start healing. It was one of the hardest times in my life. I went a lot of pain. It was traumatizing because I had to be treated for depression. So when I started the process of uh, going to United States, and by God's grace, I got a visa and I flew out of Kenya and went to start a new life in America. America, the land where dreams come true, but also 
a place where hard work is a currency that never loses its value. Beatrice, married in the bustling state of Georgia, somewhere known as Marietta. This is where she was going to script the next chapter of her life. Life was not easy in America. Life is normally very, very hard. You got to work, you got to work, no joke. And I remember when I was there, because I had left my children in Kenya, I had a family to support here in Kenya, and also I had my bills, which I needed to meet in America. I worked extremely hard. This time here, she was going to have a good time full of many blessings. She started to live a good life where she was able to handle every situation she had left behind in Kenya. She also became famous to be known by almost all Kenyans who lived in America. They named her Chapati Lady. As I was working there, I felt getting employed was not enough for me. So I decided to start a business of my own. And I started a catering company, which was called New Light Catering. People focus was people from Africa, Kenya in particular. I could uh, do Kenya cuisine and uh, I could serve people. And uh, the Kenyan cuisine is the chaparis, mukimos, mandazis, samosas, all that. But this one actually required a lot of working. But remember, success always comes at a cost. As she didn't want to settle down for a regular job, here it was going to be a battle of pain every day until she felt her life was going to an end. I did this for almost 10 years when I was in the US. And it took a toll on my health. As I was doing this uh, work, one time I fell down and I had my bark. I didn't know it was serious. I went to the hospital, I, did, I hadn't broken any part of my bones. Uh, then I had a second fall and uh, again I had my birth, but I didn't get any broken bone. And then uh, I fell like three times. And uh, six months after falling, it's when it started taking toll on my health. I couldn't stand. If I had to stand or walk or get out of bed, I had to take pain pills every day, every single day. During this period, it was very likely that she found it hard by being by herself anymore. She felt very lonely and struggled a lot. She might have even about her in herself because she still didn't understand what was wrong with her life. I remember I had days of tears. I could cry. I could cry. Sometimes I could just kind of look on at death on my face because of the pain. Oh my goodness, it was painful. But I thank God spared my life and by his grace I managed to come back to Kenya. But you may wonder what strange thing that happened to this mother to lose everything she had because before she left America she was already a rich woman. When I relocated back here to Kenya I had carried all my stuff and even bought new stuff and I had put them in a container and I lost it all. It never arrived in Kenya. I came only with my, there were about two suitcases that I had carried at the airport. That's what I brought back in this country. I lost, I lost things that were a lot of money running in millions, but I didn't get anything. It was the most devastating time of my life. After working so hard in that fallen land, given all my energy, 
given all my time, having stayed away from my children, but I lost everything. I did. I did. It was very hard. That I came to this country. Oh my god. After all those injuries and many sleepless nights, this time she was left as if she had fought for nothing. The bad times for this mother didn't end there because the journey of her life was filled by leaving wounds every moment of her life. I... I... registered a company to start doing tendering with the government because I fall under persons with disability. I, my, I have a problem with my leg and even after the falls it make, became worse. So after registering this company I started looking for tenders with the government. Unfortunately I couldn't get none until one time my sister had a friend who was doing the same tendering pro, uh, pro, uh, the process. She was getting tenders from different companies, organizations, NGOs. So my sister introduced me to this lady because this lady was looking for somebody who can uh, finance her tender because she didn't have money. So the little money I had, I got in and told her we get to a, M a memorandum of understanding. We wrote all the required agreement and memorandum and signing documents and everything. And therefore, uh, we decided, I decided to help her apply. Unfortunately, she was not true because she called me a lot of money and disappeared. Even though all this happened to her, Beatrice is a good example of a woman with a strong heart because it's not always easy to recognize her pain unless she decides to talk to you about her life. And that's it. Because it's my sister, I trusted her. And uh, I don't know what happened after giving out the money. It just disappeared. Some millions. Some millions. Mm. Mm. Gone. Then again in the church, I was going, going uh, then after coming from America. I was told uh, there, there are people who are doing uh, some businesses and these businesses are bringing new, very good returns. So I decided to, uh, to chip in because it's a, my, the pastor. Mm. Unfortunately, I chipped in my million again to went under. Mm. And I was just left kind of like hanging. The millionaire lady is around. It's gone. And it's gone. Gone. Mm. Your stuff is gone. Your money is gone. When she arrived in Kenya, because of the knowledge and skills she had acquired in America, she came up with the idea of going into politics. Unfortunately, everything she tried to do used to fail in the end. Governor, I wanted to be a senator. A senator. Right. Seriously? Right, seriously. What? Imagine yeah. someone who once had a house, cars, and a lot of expensive things, and lived a life of luxury and comfort, but then all disappeared dramatically. But this is a challenging and unexpected journey that can happen to anyone, because life has no balance, they said. Here I am now, mm -hmm. after trying all those things, mm -hmm. I'm kind of like now down, down, down. Money gone, everything gone. As we normally know, people only love a rich person. After a long journey of hard life, losing everything, it's so sad to hear about the life she lives in today. After now, I was down, down, down. Mm -hmm. Somebody approached me and told me there is this uh, online business where even ladies, uh, where people do taxi. Mm. And uh, because it's safe, because uh, uh, people are registered in offices, there's a bit of security, not like the other taxis. Why don't I try it? Mm. And I said, no, I didn't have a car. And uh, the person told me, there are people who all give out their cars and they are paid daily. Mm. So I approached one person and this person accepted I can use their car. So, and that's how I, I joined uh, the online taxi business. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. And it has been helping me a great deal. 
mm. at least i can't sleep hungry mm. and also i can't mm. sleep outside though though even is a struggle to get the house rent and everything it's very challenging mm. because as you pay you can you have to pay this car every single day then on that there is the petrol which is very expensive mm. and then on the same uh, on the same token there is commission mm. from these uh, these applications mm. they charge like 25% per every trip mm. so uh it has been challenging but at least it puts food on the table mm. and also on the same token because it's a car mm. with my my legs problem mo sitting on the car is easy to drive oh, yeah. yeah instead of walking eh? mm. so it helped me also in mobility yeah because i can be able to go uh here and there and do my stuff due to poverty she also has some health problems but because she has no money she can't afford the treatment for herself actually this i got injured when i was young it didn't have a big problem but uh because of this walking or driving throughout and looking straight it has been straining the eye a lot uh, so in the process of the eye being strained so it started now kind of like becoming sick so it most of the time it hurts me a lot so and also at the same time now i can't work for long hours i have to work very short hours so that i don't strain the eye it has an injury which uh, i went to the hospital and i was told they call it cornea cornea ulcer mm. uh, and then they required me to the eye to be treated but i didn't have the money okay. and also on my leg also mm. thrusting one day because uh, i was told i can be done some therapy mm. which uh, right now because of that problem mm. i have a nerves problem and these nerves are very very painful when it becomes painful so most of the time i have to live on pain pills yeah i have to live on pain pills so that i can be able to do day and day in stuff yeah so but uh one has to do what one, one has to do i like the way they are so ah uh, yeah yes 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 uh, only for her it seems that nothing has changed because her life continues to be dominated by endless difficulties she says there are some wishes that she thought if she could gain at least life could be easier thank you very much uh my viewers I'm coming to you and I'm pleading right now financially I'm very much down and uh my desire has been to be self reliant to be able to do my own stuff and uh getting cash which one is praying daily has been taking a toll on me very stressful and straining and I'm uh, uh, pleading with the viewers if they can help me get a car of my own that i can be able to drive and get my daily bread i really, really really appreciate because for the tax business i have seen how it works and i know i can do it and also i'm pleading with viewers if you can help me to have my eye treated because right now it's been disturbing me a lot and also get um, some treatment for the nerves or because of my leg uh i would really really appreciate if you can chip anything that you can be able to and come to my rescue for uh, a place to stay i believe one day god is going to prov- provide a home my own house even if it's a small house where i can be able to pay uh, live without paying bills i, I mean ba- paying rent I would really, really appreciate. You can help her through givinglife.com. The link is in the description and always in the top comments. In the face of diversity, our strength lies in our ability to keep moving forward. Let's take this lesson to our heart and support Beatrice on her journey to recover and self-reliance. I am Shema the Voice and this is Afrimax English. Please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications.